Welcome to Rust Releases. I love Rust and I love talking to people about Rust. If I get anything wrong in this video, please comment below and let me know so I can fix it. As I go over this new Rust release, I'm also going to cover some highlights from Cargo and Clippy, which usually have corresponding releases. Today I'm going to go even further and give you a quick preview of the upcoming Rust Up release. But first, let's go over Rust 1.69.0, which was released today, the 20th of April, 2023, thanks to the hard work of 374 contributors who contributed all sorts of fixes and improvements. Number one, this one is an interesting overlap between the Rust compiler, Cargo, and Clippy. There has long been a class of warnings emitted from Rust or Clippy whose fixes can be automatically applied by running Cargo Fix or Cargo Clippy Fix, respectively. This is useful, but you have to both know that the feature exists and remember to try running it to see if it will fix your particular warnings. Now, if Cargo sees a warning that can be fixed this way, it will prompt you to run the corresponding fix command. Nice. Number two, debug information is not included in build scripts by default anymore. This improves compilation speed for anything that has a build script at the expense of not emitting backtraces if the build script crashes. That's a pretty decent trade-off considering it's pretty common to compile things and pretty rare that you're working on fixing a crashing build script. But if you are working on fixing a crashing build script, you can add one of these configuration snippets to your cargo.toml to enable debug output and backtraces for your build script on your development or release profiles respectively. Number three, this one is a mouthful. Some Intel and AMD CPUs support an instruction which compares and exchanges 16 bytes of data atomically. And now you can use Rust's target feature attributes and macros to detect this support at compile time or runtime. There's a link in the description if you want to read more about target feature. Number four, default repr C enums to C int size. Before this change, if you slapped repr-c on an enum, it was always 32 bits, which is how C sizes enums on most platforms, but C compilers size enums the same as the C integer, which is sometimes smaller or larger than 32 bits. So now Rust does that too, because the whole point of repr-c is to lay things out like C does. Number five, let's take a look at a pair of items that were stabilized in this release. First, the cstir struct gets a new method that creates a cstir from any byte slice that contains at least one null byte. The second item is the error which that method returns if there's no null byte in the byte slice. Pretty straightforward. Number six, const stabilized APIs. Do you use low level sockets in your code? If so, there are a whole bunch of methods you can evaluate at compile time now. These methods are all pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go into them. Next, I wanna go over a couple of my favorite new Clippy lints in this release. Number seven is transmute int to non-zero. Let's say you're transmuting a number to a non-zero type. That works, but transmute allows you to change any type of the same size into a non-zero type, even if it's nonsensical to do so. Instead, Clippy suggests using the non-zero type's new unchecked method that checks the type at compile time to make sure you're dealing with an appropriate type. Number eight, my next favorite Clippy lint from this release is suspicious command arg space. This one is super cool because it looks for when you are creating a command and then it looks at the string value passed to the arg method. And if it looks like it's a flag with a space and then an argument, it warns you that arg doesn't split on spaces. So you probably need to call args with an array of your options instead. How cool is it that Clippy will lint the string literal value for a specific method in the standard library for you? Super cool. Those are my favorite highlights for Rust Cargo and Clippy. Now let's go over Rust Up 1.26.0, which should be released any day now. I'm making this video on April 20th, 2023, and by the time you watch this, it will probably be out. It has fixes and improvements from 35 contributors. Let's go over some highlights. Number one, Rust Up now proxies the Rust Analyzer command. 
What does that mean? You may have noticed that RustUp will manage multiple Rust toolchain versions for you, so you can have stable and nightly installed at the same time, or maybe some specific version of Rust you want to keep using. Here are the toolchains I have installed right now. Uh, maybe I should clean some of those out. I'm not using all those. Anyway, the way RustUp manages this is it installs proxies for things like Cargo and Rust-C, and when you run them, it looks at your configuration to choose which actual version of Cargo or Rust-C or whatever to run whenever you type in that command. Maybe you use Nightly for one project and a specific version for another project. You can configure it however you want. Now it does that for Rust Analyzer as well, so you can have multiple versions of Rust Analyzer installed and configure different projects to use different versions. Number two, the experimental GPG signature validation feature was removed. It was having problems and the developers decided to throw it away and design an entirely new signature validation scheme in the future. Number three, instead of typing out RustUp update to update your tool chains in RustUp itself, you can optionally type just RustUp up. I wonder how many developer years that will save us in the long run. Number four, RustUp got some Windows love. It now reports its version number correctly to the Windows registry. There's a RustUp installer for Windows ARM64 and a path issue was fixed so that recursive calls continue to use the command proxies like they're supposed to. And that's it for the highlights today, folks. Please like and subscribe.